Hello everybody, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Zhang. I'm an internal medicine physician and a researcher. Recently, there is a lot of research about uh, autoantibodies in the long COVID patients. So antibodies normally target foreign antigens such as virus, bacteria, while autoantibodies bind to the cellular proteins. So they are involved in autoimmune diseases such as lupus and rheumatoid arthritis. Since a lot of autoantibodies are found in the serum along COVID patients, it is a, a great question if uh, autoantibodies can cause long COVID and uh, whether this is an autoimmune disease. Uh, let's look at available data and uh, we can decide if th this is the case. First, I want to clarify that autoantibodies and autoimmune diseases are not the same. So lower level autoantibodies are common in healthy individuals. So levels are significantly increased with most infections. Let's look at the first early studies in 1970s. Uh, they look at the influenza uh, infection. So when people infected with the influenza, uh, they 83.8% positive for autoantibodies such as anti-smooth muscle antibody. And uh, compared to control, it's only 12.4%. Anti-nuclear antibody was positive in 84.8% versus the control 16%. So you can see that a very high number of influenza virus has autoantibodies. If you assume that these autoantibodies can cause long-term symptoms, we should have seen a lot of long-haul influenza, but it did not happen. Actually, autoantibodies was also increased in bacterial infections and uh, even in some influenza vaccine. It also correlates with chronic inflammation. It appears that uh, when our immune system is activated in any way, we see an increased level of autoantibodies. And uh, they are mostly not causing any problem for the body at all. So it is too early to tell if autoantibody in the long COVID cause any problems, but we can safely say that long COVID is not autoimmune disease. So autoimmune disease are relatively rare, and uh, they always have a genetic component. Infection can serve as a trigger. It is impossible to have 10 to 20% of the general population who develop autoimmune disease with long COVID. Now let's look at autoantibodies. First, autoantibodies are not always harmful, and uh, they can be a normal component of our physiology and uh, may be beneficial to our body systems. For instance, autoantibodies are involved in regulating the function of cellular receptors. They can regulate cell death and uh, inflammation. One example is that uh, autoantibodies can bind to antigens in damaged or dying cells, preventing further immune response and inflammation. There are also autoantibodies against the cytokines, which further decrease the level of cytokines and reduce the inflammation. Um, based on studies, physiological autoantibodies are normally IgM, and uh, they loosely bind to the autoantigen, preventing further immune response. But in contrast, Pathological autoantibodies are larger IgG. They bind their antigen tightly. They cause further immune response and cell death. Uh, let's look at uh, pathological autoantibodies. We know that uh, pathological antibodies can cause harm to the cells when they bind to their antigens. Uh, they can also cause autoimmune disease, but the presence of pathological autoantibodies does not equate autoimmune disease. An example is the autoantibody against troponin after heart attack. So troponin are uh, normally localized inside of, um, heart muscle cells. When the cells are damaged, such as in a situation when we have a heart attack, so troponin will be released into the bloodstream. And uh, autoantibody against troponin can help clearing up the circulating troponin from bloodstream. Since autoantibody against troponin can also bind to 
the damaged heart cells, it is debatable that uh, this autoantibody can cause further damage to the uh, cells already and ischemia. But in the situation of autoantibodies, normally there's two classes of it. And uh, one is that uh, the cell autoantibodies uh, bind to the surface of cells. In a situation like that, it directly correlates with disease progression and it can actually cause autoimmune diseases. In this figure, uh, published in this article, the outline several antibodies directly targets the surface antigen, and uh, this causes autoimmune disease. But in this situation, a uh, patient normally has genetic uh, mutation that's causing the changes in the property of cell surface antigen caused binding to the antigen by an antibody. But this condition is not happening in COVID patients. The second class of autoantibodies are those that are binding to the antigen within the cell. Proteins inside the cellular interior uh, has not been in any contact with our immune system. They are considered foreign when exposed due to cell damage. In theory, antibody against this antigen can cause harm. But because antibodies cannot cross the cell membrane, they have no effect uh, to a cell with normal structure. In autoimmune disease, anti-nuclear antibody is a very common class of antibodies. They bind to the component of a cellular nuclear structure. These autoantibodies can correlate with severity of disease and help with diagnosis. But whether they cause disease is uncertain. Since they cannot cross the cell membrane, the target cells must have some damage before they can bind their antigen. Uh, this is why, for majority of autoimmune disease, the exact mechanism are unclear. Let's look at COVID. When COVID virus enters cells, they can definitely cause damage to cells. The acute phase of infection is a real mess. And uh, you have a virus entering cells, replicating inside the cells. In the process, a cell will die and the inflammation occurs in every organ. Then when the dust settles down, the people with severe infection will have a lost cells in every organ. Uh, in most of our organs, the lost cell cannot be regenerated. We may have to deal with reduced organ function and uh, increase the number of patients will have renal failure, heart failure, and even dementia. Due to COVID invasion of multi-organ systems, uh, cell death can happen in any organs. So that's why we can see our broad spectrum of autoantibodies. In four to six, six weeks after infection, most of damaged cells are already cleared or repaired. But tissue inflammation may cause additional collateral damage to the tissue cells. When cell damage is severe, they can, a cell can die. But cells with mild damages can survive due to cellular repair. IgM autoantibodies can bind to the damaged cells and prevent further damage by immune cells. If they are not repaired in time, IgG autoantibodies is produced. If the cells has not been repaired at that time, they are probably not going to survive. When IgG tightly binds to it, they are marked for destruction. These autoantibodies are here to clear up the dying cells. The conclusion is that uh, long COVID probably is not autoimmune disease. Autoantibodies probably will not cause damage to healthy cells, but able to help us clear up the dying cells. That's for today. Thank you for listening.